A little while back, I did a detailed unboxing video on the Xiaomi Pad 5 Pro. Since then, I've been testing both the Pad 5 and the Pad 5 Pro and it's been a good 10 weeks or so. So in today's video, let's take a look at how Xiaomi's Pad 5 has fared. What's to like and dislike about this new tablet from Xiaomi? Hey guys, Ash here from C40 Tech and welcome to my full review of the Xiaomi Pad 5. Let's get started. Now amongst the tablets that Xiaomi has launched, this, the Pad 5, it's the only one they sell globally. The 5 Pro and the 5 Pro 5G, at least for now, they are limited to China. So I feel it makes a lot of sense to start with what the Pad 5 can't do, what it lacks, not just in comparison to, the, uh, to its more expensive stable mates, but just in general, in comparison with other similar tablets. So first, we have the fingerprint scanner or the lack thereof. While the Pro version has one built into the power key, that's been cut here. You do get face unlocked via the selfie camera though. The next thing to note is the lack of a headphone jack. You don't even get an adapter in the box. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Number three on the MIA list is micro SD. This one's the most disappointing to me. Tablets are media consumption devices after all, and the extra storage would have been very much appreciated here. And finally, numero cuatro, GPS. Not a big deal on a tablet that does not have data connectivity, but it is still one worth mentioning. Okay, now with the what's missing, missing part out of the way, let's get started with the review. You know how in the past, for some phones, Xiaomi and Redmi have gone with a glass back but a plastic frame? This one's the exact opposite. We have a metal frame and a plastic back. I like it though. The matte plastic finish is quite excellent. It doesn't pick up a bunch of fingerprints or smudges. Uh, and personally, I think with tablets, the feel of the sides are more important than the back because you rarely use a tablet naked. Over the last four or five years, my go-to tablets have been the 2018 uh, iPad Pro, the Galaxy Tab S6, and the iPad Mini right now. I never use them without a case on. And I think that's gonna be the case for most people. If you have a different point of view, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what you think. And while you're down there, also click the link in the description to check out our sponsor for the video, 28mobile.com. If there is any smartphone or in this case tablet that's not available in your country, 28mobile.com is the way to go. They are reliable, they ship quick and offer great support. So do check them out if you haven't yet. Now coming back as far as placements go to the top, we have Dolby Vision Atmos branding alongside two speakers, a microphone and the power key. Volume rockers and two more microphones are present to the right. And to the bottom, we have another couple of speakers with one final microphone and of course the USB Type-C port. There are a couple of other things too. To the right, you see this. This is where the Xiaomi Smart Pen connects. It attaches magnetically and the tablet keeps it charged. Kind of very second gen Apple Pencil-ish. Now to the left, you have this connector that lets you use Xiaomi's first party keyboard. Both of these are optional accessories, though in some markets, at least initially, Xiaomi is including the pen with every Mi Pad they ship. The Xiaomi Smart Pen, you know, talking about it, it's quite nice to use. The palm rejection here is accurate. It's comfortable to hold and use. It's It's got 49 to 6 levels of pressure sensitivity. Look closer and you'll see it has two buttons. Press this one, tap on the screen to launch the notes app and you can start writing or sketching. Uh, the same button now lets you switch between brushes and when you press and hold it, you trigger the eraser. There's a tiny bit of delay with triggering anything though. Let's see this. Every time I'm done writing a letter, I'm actually pressing the button, but it takes a little bit of time for that change to trigger. Now the other button, you can press it to cut out part of the screen for a screenshot. You see how slow and deliberate I am here? Because any quicker and it's not gonna work. Now that's not to say there's a lot of latency. It just happens whenever you wanna trigger something. If you're just using it, it's not an issue. Uh, it's pretty responsive in that case. So hopefully they can fix, fix this with an update in the future. Uh, now, I also like how unlike the Apple Pencil, you can use the Xiaomi Smart Pen for navigation. With Apple, you can't multitask or switch between apps. You need to resort to you know, using your finger again, but you can do all that and even swipe in from the corner for a quick screenshot. That's an extra feature that's a bonus. Now coming to the keyboard, it is okay. I mean, having used both Apple and Samsung's implementations, I kind of did miss having a trackpad. Uh, might not be as big a deal for some, but for me, keyboards and pointing devices, they kind of go together. The experience here just felt a little jarring. The keyboard itself feels spacious, uh, as spacious as possible given a 11 inch tablet we are dealing with. The 1.2 millimeter travel, I mean, typing on this was nice. 
Do know that the way Xiaomi has implemented this keyboard means the angle at which the tablet is when you when the keyboard is attached, it's fixed. You can't change it, which is something you could do with both Apple and Samsung. But this angle seems to be fine for most use cases, so I didn't particularly mind it. Talking about use cases, one major use case for tablets, especially these days, is video conferencing. Whether it's talking to lo loved ones over Skype or attending a class or that business call over Zoom, the selfie camera, I really wish it was aligned for lands landscape instead of portrait. The camera itself does fairly well. This is an 8 megapixel f2 with electronic stabilization. It shoots good selfies and the selfie video was much better than I anticipated. Now to the back, we have a single 13 megapixel f2 camera and from a tablet camera perspective, it feels solid. As you can see, the images turned out just fine. Even low light shots with night mode enabled weren't horrible. And if you should shoot video, I'd recommend you not to. I mean, not cause 4K30 isn't usable. I mean, just, just don't be that guy. Now, from a software perspective, we have the tablet version of MIUI, which is just like the regular version of MIUI, but with some cosmetic changes and weird omissions, like say the theme store. I can't believe it's been seven whole years since the first Mi Pad launched, and we are still asking for theme support. Now, barring that, the user experience is excellent. Everything feels smooth and fluid on this 120Hz IPS panel. Would I have preferred AMOLED? Hell yes, but this is a very good IPS panel. Uh, it's pretty punchy and has both HDR10 as well as Dolby Vision support. The resolution BDW is a little lower Quad HD, so we get a very crisp 274 pixels per inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. The Xiaomi Pad 5 is pretty easy on the hands. It's a little over 500 grams, it's 6.9 millimeters thick. Even with the keyboard case on, I didn't mind the weight usually. I mean, I do remove the magnetic keyboard case from time to time when I read comics or something, if I'm using it for a little too long. But for the most part, the Mi Pad 5 is pretty wieldable for a tablet with an 11-inch screen. And as you can see, gaming on this was a pleasant experience. The excellent display, the speakers, and most importantly, the SoC on the inside, Qualcomm Snapdragon 860, which is basically a 855 Plus with a new name. But even a two-year-old flagship Qualcomm chip manages to perform perfectly fine. We get six gigs of RAM and 128 or 256 gigs of onboard storage. And rounding things off is a 8720 mAh battery. The battery life on this thing is insane. The idle drain is negligible. So given I generally use tablets for a little bit of night reading or watching some videos in bed, my usage isn't particularly taxing. So say it's 45 minutes to an hour each day on average, and I could get multiple days out of this. The idle battery drain is that low. The Pad 5 also supports up, uh, up to 33 watts of charging, but uh, at least in some markets, Xiaomi is only including a 22 and a half watt charger in the box. So, uh, what do we have so far? Built-in design, I'm gonna call it excellent. The display is very good. Performance, again, very good. Battery and charging, I'm gonna bring that back to excellent. User experience, I'll leave it at very good. I'll talk a few points for this being MIUI and having some ads in it, but hey, the global ROM is supposed to be ad-free, so feel free to change the rating if you wanna. And finally, the price, Xiaomi has priced the Pad 5 at 1999 yuan in China. That converts to roughly 23,000 rupees or 310 US dollars. In Europe, they've launched it at 350 euros though, which is no surprise given the European prices are generally much higher. For this asking price, Xiaomi seems to have put together one hell of a tablet. Uh, probably the best bang for your buck Android tablet available today. In fact, come to think of it, there are only two other tablets that I, I could see myself recommending over this uh, at around this price. One, the Lenovo Pad Pro 11. That's the one that's got pretty much the same specs. It's got an 870 instead, just like the Xiaomi Pad 5 Pro. Uh, it's also priced the same as the Pad 5 Pro. What I love about that tablet is the fact that it trades this 120Hz LCD for a 90Hz OLED, which I think is perfect. Now, the other tablet I see as competition is whatever iPads priced around the same. I mean, with Apple, you're gonna, you're gonna have to go back a few years to hit this price point. And so the Xiaomi Pad 5 is gonna be better on all fronts, you know, the display build, whatever, battery, it is gonna have better specs. But at the end of the day, all, I mean, this equation, it boils down to really Apple versus Android. And sadly, Apple has done a much better job with tablet adoption, which means there are way more optimized apps for tablets on the Apple side of things. So anyway, there you go. That's been my take on Xiaomi's Pad 5. An excellent tablet that checks almost all the boxes. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with what I've had to say in this video? Do you have a different point of view? Let me know in the comments below. And beat it up. If you do want to pick a Xiaomi Pad 5, do check out our sponsors, 28mobile.com. I'll have a link in the description. 
And with that, we get to the end of this review. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Read Tech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.